Good morning, everybody. I'm Matt Woodburn from the Natural History Museum London and the Tadwick Latham Accord Task Group. And this talk today is intended to pass on some of our experiences of standard mapping as part of the Latham Accord data standard development process. Before we go any further, I should briefly mention what Latham Accord is for the uninitiated. It's a new Tadwig data standard that is designed to support the representation and discovery of collections at the group level rather than the more granular level of individual objects or specimens. Now, there's not really enough time to go into any detail about the standard itself today, but there is a wealth of information about it online, so please do go have a look at our GitHub repository, which is linked at the bottom of the slide. The standard is lined up to go out for public review shortly after this week's conference, so I'd also urge anyone who's interested to keep an eye out for that and uh, to get involved. So looking at Latimer Core from a mapping perspective, where does it fit into the data standards landscape? Well, Latimer Core is basically about collections, the people involved in them and the organisations that hold them. So there are clear conceptual overlaps or alignments with a range of other data standards, especially those focused on specimens and occurrences like Darwin Core, ABCD and the EFG extension and the CIDOC conceptual reference model. There are also intersections with standards that are less specific to the natural science domain, but are best of breed for design, describing people, organisations and activities. And these include the PROV provenance ontology and the org organisational ontology, both provided by the World Wide Web Consortium and schema.org. Mapping to these standards therefore provides opportunities not just to call on wider pools of expertise and avoid duplicating effort, but also opens up potential for extending Latimer core data sets using the richer sets of terms within these standards. When Latimer core was going through its expert review stage, our reviewers very helpfully recommended that we attempt an exercise in mapping to these standards using the Simple Knowledge Organization System, or SCOS which is a worldwide web consortium standard for sharing and linking knowledge organisation systems. This effectively required defining each mapping according to one of the five SCOS mapping relation categories that you can see here. As well as providing a standardised format and approach, this is also intended to help us check that where we were proposing to reuse existing terms from standards like Darwin Core, rather than reinventing our own, we were doing that in a valid way. Having agreed that only mappings that fit the SCOS exact match category allowed us to borrow that intended term in that way. This gave us a systematic approach to that validation. For those unfamiliar with SCOS, it would probably help to quickly run through what each of those five mapping relation categories mean, taking a mapping between a term in Latimer Core and a related term in Darwin Core as the example here. So the first three, exact match, close match, and related match, are considered to be symmetrical mappings. Exact match means that the concepts should be completely interchangeable, any valid value for the term in Latimer Core should also be valid for the term in Darwin Core and vice versa. A close match means that there's a large degree of overlap in the concepts, but they're not identical, so it can't be assumed that they'll always mean the same thing. And a related match is a bit more vague. There is some relationship between the concepts, but they're definitely not interchangeable. And finally, there are the two hierarchical categories, broad match and narrow match. The first would mean that the Latimer Core concept fits entirely inside the Darwin Core concept, but has a lot more limited scope. Narrow match is the opposite. The more limited Darwin Core concept fits within the broader scope of the Latimer Core concept in that particular mapping. Once you get your head around those five categories, things initially seem quite straightforward. Until you then get into the process of working out which category each mapping should be, and which is where the pain part really starts to begin. There are a whole host of factors involved in making that decision. Firstly, comparing the definition and the general concept of the two terms. This takes a degree of judgment and interpretation. But then you have some of the structural elements to take into account. Are both terms simple properties or complex classes or one of each? If they're classes, do they have the same set of child properties? Even if the definitions align, are there model relationships around the term in Latimer Core or the target standard, which means that they don't align? Do either or both of the terms have a controlled vocabulary or other constraints to their values? And if so, are they the same on both sides? So that's where it all started to get a bit complicated, particularly because standards documentation, language and structure vary quite widely and make like for like comparisons rather non-trivial. One of the mechanisms we used to try to manage this in Latimer Gore was to construct a decision tree that took each of these factors into account. The first draft of which you can see here, although it's obviously too small to read on screen. Although fairly complex in its own right, it did help to have a systematic approach to that review and may provide something that others can also reference and improve. 
Having chewed through that process as much as time allowed, where did we end up? Well, we have a lot of broad matches, which mainly represent the mapping of Latimer-Core's more generic concepts, such as titles, descriptions and relationships, to even broader and more generic concepts in doubling core. We have 58 Latimer-Core terms for which we found exact matches, mainly in Darwin core and its chronometric age extension, but also to some more generic terms in schema.org around addresses and contact details. There were originally rather more of these before the SCOS mapping exercise proved that a number of those weren't valid. So these remaining terms are the ones that we have borrowed for Latimer Core, which means they must retain the normative definitions from the other standard, including the namespace, the term name and formal definition. There is, however, some leeway in modifying non-normative elements like the label, examples and usage notes to make them more Latimer Core relevant. And finally, we then have a smattering of close matches where definitions didn't quite align enough for exact matches, some narrow matches where the Latimer Core term was broader in scope than the object term, and a couple of related matches where the concepts were definitely related, but in a way that was just quite difficult to formally define. Our initial output from the mapping exercise was very basic, just three fields, a subject term URL, an object term URL, and a SCOS mapping relation to link them. We also then had the opportunity to flesh this out a bit using the SSSOM schema, which is something that Jutta Buschbaum in our group has particularly been spearheading. SSSOM provides an extensive and structured metadata schema for describing mapping relations, and we incorporated some of those elements into the Latimer core mapping documentation. This initial subset of the SSSOM terms allowed us to provide more information that would be useful to both humans and machines such as term types, predicate URLs, term labels, and some indications of the provenance and the justifications for the mappings. Having generated this material, we then had to find ways to make it more widely available and useful to those who will actually be using the standard. So to this end, we've added the mappings into the Latimer Core documentation wherever possible. And this includes incorporating it into the new application created by Ben Norton, who also happens to be our review manager, that automatically generates the Latimer Core online documentation and quick reference guide from the definitions stored in our GitHub repo. Adding this information with clickable URLs to related terms and their definitions is a big step forward for making the mappings available in a human readable sense, I think. But the next steps would then be to look at making those mappings sustainably machine readable and ideally machine actionable. There's probably a good deal more thought that we need to go into that area, but extension into more of the SSSOM schema is likely to be a good starting place. So just to recap and to bring us back to the no pain, no gain part of this talk's title, there is definitely a lot to gain in carrying out this process. As mentioned, it was an effective way of validating our plans for borrowing terms, and it saved us some headaches further down the line. It's also great for promoting interoperability with other relevant standards and for drawing on the effort and brain work that's already gone into developing those standards rather than starting from scratch on every term. And it does open up that potential for integrating Latimer Core datasets with other standards to expand the scope and the level of detail in those datasets. But there is a degree of pain in the process as well. The variety of ways that different standards are structured and documented, both inside and outside of Tadwig, make it often laborious and manual processes to review mappings between their terms, and particularly because there are those many factors that I mentioned earlier to take into account. There are also considerations around sustainability of mappings and the processes needed to keep mappings valid as the different standards change and evolve. Moving forward, the formation of the Tadwig Standard Mapping Task Group provides a great opportunity for us to work together on maximizing the communal gains and reducing some of the pain points involved. Hopefully our experience in the Latimer core development can contribute to that. And one potential approach could be to review the mapping decision flow that we use to see if it could be improved and used more widely as a tool for guidance for mapping activities. It could be good to think about how mapping documentation might be incorporated into Tadwig standard documentation in the standard form, both for human and machine users, and whether a common framework for storing that documentation across multiple standards would help to support that. And also there's potential to start thinking about more advanced applications and automation to help with transformation of data between standards and to support the ongoing maintenance of the mapping themselves. So I think it's fair to say that there's plenty of exciting potential in this area. So that brings me to the end. Thank you very much for listening and apologies if I couldn't be there live to answer any questions, but please do feel free to contact me or to quiz other members of the Latimer Core group who might be online or in the room. Um, I'd like to thank in particular the core members of the Latimer Core task group and our expert reviewers who have all had major input into this process. 
And finally, to leave you with another reminder that the Latimer Core review is coming, so watch this space. Thank you very much.